All right, everybody, fingers crossed, no sound issues for the start of this one. You'll see that I have my headphones in and I'm watching on my phone, so I will hear it in a few seconds if we do have issues. Um, welcome everybody to City Market Salted Caramel Apple Pie live stream. Super excited to have you all joining us. My name is Carrie. I am City Market's Assistant Outreach and Education Manager. Super excited to have you joining us. Just going to go over a few housekeeping things first. Um, and then I will turn things over to Gary, our instructor. Oh, I hear that we're glitchy you again. One second. We're working on fixing this now. And apologies for the issues. And yes, you don't see me right now. I will come back on in just a second when I fix this. Hopefully this should be better. I've restarted our sound software. Let's wait for that to come back. <laughs> All right. Sorry, folks. You know, we've been doing this for a couple of years and we still have sound problems. Um, I'm going to go over a few housekeeping things. My name's Carrie. I'm City Market's Assistant Outreach and Education Manager. If you're joining us a little bit late and don't want to see all the beginning parts, you can hit live. It's down near the play pause button at the bottom. Sounds better. All right, there we go. Um, and that will catch you up to where we are live instead of making you watch from the very beginning. Um, I will be monitoring the Q&A box. Once I'm done giving you this intro spiel, I'll go behind the scenes and you won't see me on camera again. Um, and whoop, and um, I'll be monitoring that. So it's the only way that you can submit questions to us. So you can type those in. I'll go back and put a message into it so that you can see where that is and how to access it. And I can either answer them uh, by text if it's something that I have the answer to, like what about city market classes in the future? I can type you an answer. Or if it's a question for our instructor, Gary, I can ask it out loud to him and he will answer you. Um, we are going to aim to be done before seven. Again, this is not designed as a bake along just because of the time needed for this recipe, the bake time, the cooling time, all of that. We have some stuff prepped in advance, but we'd be love to see photos if you do make this recipe at a later date, especially like if you have this on your Thanksgiving table, definitely send us a photo. We would love to see it. Um, I think without further ado, I will turn things over to Gary. This will be recorded. It will be put up on our website at a later date, and I will send out an email to everyone who signed up when that happens. But I think it's your turn. Gary, take it away. All right. Happy holidays, everyone. It's hard to believe <laughs> that it's November. Um, I'm Gary Stewart, and I'm the pie guy. And uh, so happy to be here with y'all to share the magic of pie making or dessert making. I, I love desserts, uh, but pies are one of my specialties. And this is my year anniversary of doing the pie classes. It's uh, Fred and I, my husband Fred in the back. And uh, I remember the first time I did this, we did two pies. <laughs> uh, my extra ginger rum pumpkin pie and my macadamia date pie. So, but we're not going to do two pies. And that was the only time that we did two, but uh, that was fun. And it's hard to believe that it's been a year that I've been doing this and it's, it's a great joy for me. And, uh, and I love the holidays, which I would include Halloween. And uh, I made this dish, the salted caramel apple pie uh, for our friends of my Halloween, Samhain gathering, potluck and ghost storytelling party several weeks ago. So, and they loved it. And I think you'll love it too. Uh, you will be a hit at Thanksgiving or Christmas if you serve or any of the holidays uh, coming up, you'll be a hit. So uh, normally I do make the crust um, during the class, but since the caramel part does take a little bit of time, I'm skipping this time doing uh making the pie dough uh, but i'll say again one of the the key rules of making pie crust because i've had people tell me oh it's too difficult it's no it's not uh it may be kind of time 
consuming it first. But now, you know, it's just I rattle them off and it's no big deal. The main things to remember when you're making your crust, besides getting a uh, King Arthur flour, which I love, and I prefer getting the organic one. Um, they do have organic flour, or just regular flour, um, and then organic butter, unsalted. Again, when it comes to baking, most of the time you will never use salted butter. You would use sweet butter or unsalted butter. Um, but also one of the major uh, rules is keep everything cold. I put my flour and my sugar in the freezer. One, it just keeps from dampness. It's a good protection from little critters if you have some. Um, it just keeps it fresher longer. Uh, but also it's cold and that's what you want. You want cold flour, cold sugar. Um, again, I put those in the freezer. The butter needs to be cold. The shortening needs to be cold. And I use Spectre's uh, non-hydrogenated shortening. Uh, my mom and her mom, and it's most moms have used Crisco. If you wanna use Crisco, that's fine. Uh, I just think non-hydrogenated shortening is a little bit safer, I mean, healthier. So, um, sorry, mom. Uh, but anyway, and if you can chill your bowl, though since it's now getting into the fall winter season, I don't imagine people's kitchens are super warm. But the thing is you want to prevent your butter and shortening melting um, while you're making the pie crust or the pie dough. You want them as individual pockets of fat and shortening. Uh, that will produce a flaky crust. And when you put in your water, once you worked in your butter and your shortening, then you need to have very cold or iced water. Use big ice cubes. <laughs> you don't want to have little bits of ice in your pie dough as you're working it. So, and when you put in the water, you put in a little bit at a time, work it with a fork, I use a long fork and uh, with long prongs and work it in gradually until it starts clumping. You don't want to put too much water into your flour shortening mixture. You know, you don't want it where it's like glue and you know, you'll just get a very rubbery crust and you don't want that. So you gradually work in the water, work it in, and then when it starts clumping, then okay, start working it with your hands and when if you need to add a little bit of water just a little bit add just a little bit and then when you can pull it together and it's not sticky you know super stick it's just you know it clumps together because it's damp enough and that's what you want you don't want it still too crumbly where it's easily you know falls apart you know you want it where it's can cohere together and then you put it in a little wrapper like I did with this little recyclable bag and chill for at least an hour. And this is what it looks like. This is what it should look like even before you chill it. It's malleable, but it's not sticky. OK, this is something you can work with. So we'll roll out our dough later on. But again, those are the key rules about making good pie crust. Now I have already cut my apples and I said granny smiths and I like granny smiths because they're tart and there's going to be a lot of sugar in this just with the sugar that you would add onto the apples but you would also we're going to be making caramel so that's a little extra sugar so having a tart apple will help but since I'm a southern boy and we had kind of limited uh, types of apples that were available to us being up here in Vermont. And again, my husband and I moved here in November. Gosh, it's almost three years since we escaped Texas and came to this wonderful state. Uh, we've been blown away with kind of the selection of apples here. Apples I've never heard of. Very local apples. Uh, 
heirloom apples. And this is a blue pear main, which they said was just highly recommended for baking. And they, um, I've tasted the apples before they're baked, um, but this is just a great apple. So, but you choose what you want. Uh, do you recommend sticking with all one variety or do you think a mix would be good? Uh, experiment, <laughs> try. I think for the apple pie, the salted caramel apple pie I made for our Halloween gathering, I use a combination of different apples. Um, sometimes the recipe calls for it. So just look for apples that are good for baking not just for eating. You want to get a baking apple and experiment. Uh, again, you know, uh, I like Macintoshes. I've made apple pies with Macintoshes. So I love a Macintosh. I guess, you know, if just play with it. Granny Smiths are a safe bet when it comes to something like this, if there's a lot of sugar, uh, because it's a very tart apple. So the tartness and the sugar kind of balance out. Maybe not Honeycrisp with this recipe. Probably <laughs> Way not. Way too sweet. Yeah, and then never get an American red apple. Or uh, red Delicious. Red yeah. Delicious, because one, I don't think they're delicious. No. They're pulpy, my experience. Um, but if you're in an area that has heirloom apples, go ahead and try them out. I mean, I love this one. It's really good. So um, after I cut these, since the recipe that I got is from uh, Bon Appetit uh, magazine, uh, they had a special edition which was just for baking. Um, they didn't recommend apple juice. And normally I would put fresh, freshly squeezed, uh, not apple juice, lemon juice. And normally I would use some lemon juice with any fruit pie, um, but this has apple vinegar in it. So I put the apple vinegar in it. Uh, and it is, I believe, two tablespoons of apple cider. Yes, apple cider vinegar, two yep. tablespoons. Everybody should have gotten the recipe attached to the handout um, or the email. And that handout does include Gary's pie crust recipe. Like you said, he's just not going to demo it this time, but it does have the recipe there for you so that you can try it. And we are a little bit behind on uploading some classes. So Gary does have some other classes that will go up later this season where you can watch him demo the pie crust if you're having trouble with it. So keep an eye out for those in the future. Yes, every every single, uh, let's see, class that I've before I, I've done the crust. The only one that's up that we have so far is the chocolate Kahlua tart, which is a different crust. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I forgot that I did that. We yeah. are we are making an effort to get more classes up this winter. Um, we're just a little bit behind on that process. And when they are up, like he said, every other class has um, his demo of the pie. Yes, crust. that's right. OK, so this is now I'm doing the spice uh, sugar mixture, they will go into the apples. Okay. So, it calls for a cup of sugar. Can people do this with um, more natural sugars like sucanat or coconut sugar, or does it only really work with white sugar? Uh, I think it should work just fine. Sugar in the bottle. Uh, kind of thing. I haven't never, I've never tried it, so I don't know how it exactly it comes out, but it's worth a shot. If people have, you know, uh, dietary limitations, then try it. it sh I think it should work. It should be fine. Okay, then it has a fourth cup of a um, flour. So I'm going to go ahead and work that in. I have lumps of sugar, which is not bad. In the past, I think I would just dump some sugar, then dump the flour, then dump the spices. But over time, it's like, mm, that probably won't be consistent all the way through, <laughs> even out. So 
So I mix the dry stuff first and then put it in. So then I can be assured that I'm going to have the sugar, the flour, the spices evenly distributed through the fruit. So here we go. That looks nice and blended. Now, okay, I'm going to put in now, oh, the brown sugar. In the closet behind you. To right the left-hand side, up about head height, there should be some. There it is. Thank you very much. That's like a natural kind of cane sugar, and then there's the brown sugar in the box. So up to you. I'll use this. Great. I like dark. Yeah. Dark brown sugar. Whenever they say light brown sugar, I ignore it. <laughs> Unless it's dark. absolutely necessary. So does okay. that mean you're the grade B or the former grade B maple syrup fan than the uh, It depends. Amber? When I'm baking, then I use the very stronger one, the robust, because you want that. You want to have that kind of uh, strength mm -hmm. in your taste. So a fourth cup of that, put that in. You know, I didn't like chemistry uh, growing up uh, when I was in high school. I, I think hardly anybody likes chemistry. <laughs> uh, but this is really like chemistry. You know, finding the right measurements to combine to create that experience on the palate, you know. Uh, now we have one teaspoon of ground cinnamon. That should be enough there. Work that in. And I love the smell of cinnamon. Work that in. And then I said three fourths teaspoon of ground nutmeg. I'm just going to do just bump it up to one teaspoon. I, I was going to say this seems like recipe you can kind of play with the spices in a yeah, little bit. Yeah, you do. And I was copying the original document, mm -hmm. but then I all I always bump up the spices. I did that with an apple crisp the other day. I looked at the spice amounts and I was like, that's not going to be enough. And I almost doubled it. And? Turned out great. Exactly. See, I want my dishes, whether they're sweet or savory, not to slap you hard, but is to wake you up and that, oh, I taste it. The, the only sin would be if it's too salty mm -hmm. or too spicy because I can't handle too much uh, chilies and stuff like that. And then I'll do half a teaspoon of allspice. Work that in. And I know it sounds kind of bizarre, but salt. But this is a salted caramel apple pie. And now, you know, um, salted caramel is just kind of, it's normal now. It's all the rage, yeah. It's all the rage. So let's see, I need half a teaspoon. Yeah, half a teaspoon. Work that in. And now we're ready. To work in the spice combo. Or mixture into our apples. What are your thoughts on flour thickened pie fillings versus cornstarch thickened? Um. 
Like, do you tend to see a difference in what fruits get one or the other? Or I think I prefer corn starch myself because uh, it doesn't seem to get gummy mm -hmm. like flour can. Uh, but this recipe calls for you know just a small amount of flour, right. so it really didn't make a difference uh, to me. So and and recipes, I see recipes calling for cornstarch or they call for flour. It just kind of depends. Mm -hmm. um, this one, since it asks for a small amount of regular flour, and I mixed it with other things, it seemed to be just fine. Yeah. Um, when it's by itself. You know, for a thickening agent, I think I prefer cornstarch, mm -hmm. but you can use flour. You just have to be careful not to let it get clumpy. Yeah. Great. We have so, someone saying they're feeling inspired, like inspired, but with pie as a joke. Uh -huh. uh, in inspired, inspired, <laughs> inspired. I don't know how to say oh, it. Oh, it looks better written out than me saying it. <laughs> oh, it's funny. I like a. Uh, Humor is a great gift. Uh, someone asks if you don't have apple cider vinegar, can you use apple juice or apple cider and add some vinegar to it? That can go in the compost right off to your or yeah, there. Uh, be creative. You know, um, that's why when I am going to make something, well, Fred will know that sometimes I forget what everything I need, but I do try to make it to where I make sure I had everything I need. So, um, but I mean, also you could just Google mm -hmm. what are good substitutes for apple cider vinegar if you don't have it. So. Yeah, and I feel like in this recipe, especially it's such a small amount. Yeah. That it's not gonna be that much of a difference if you either a, leave it out or substitute it. It's it's only two tablespoons for right, for and or you apple. could just use lemon juice. Count. Yeah, and then add a little bit of apple cider. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you have that apple flavoring. But yeah, great idea. Let us know how it turns out. Yeah, please do. And how many people have people sent us photos of pies that they've made? Uh, a couple people in the past, I think. But yeah, would love photos of this one if anybody yeah. tuned in and then makes this at a later date. It's yeah. a lot more fun, you know, when we can be together in person baking, but this live stream kind of, it's fun to know that we've sort of ended up in your kitchens. Yes, exactly. Um, you know, because this is, uh, and now I kind of joke and said this is the gospel of pie, <laughs> but, uh, but it is good news um, making good food. And, you know, I, I like sharing. You know, community building is very important for me. I've shared that many times before as an organizer and activist around environmental issues, social justice, racial justice issues. The actions are important, but what was even more important was creating community, ongoing community that we could you know, support other actions, but building community uh, is very, very important. And I think sharing your achievements is wonderful. Even if you're a brave soul, share uh, some of your disasters <laughs> to laugh. I mean, I remember the first time I tried to make this and I thought I had sugar and I put water in it to make the caramel and it never did anything. And finally I realized I was using salt. Oh no. <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> Luckily, I didn't add that to the pie. Uh, so I have to, you have to laugh. You just have to laugh at, at oneself, at ourselves. And then a, um, try again. So I, that was that was one of my highlights. Uh, At least you didn't decide to dump it in anyway and like go, oh, it'll be no, fine. No, so I know this is sugar. No, it's, no, it's not sugar, so. Yeah, we have so. someone saying, um, it seems like the apple cider vinegar is just acidulating the water to keep the apples from going brown. The variety of vinegar is just upping the flavor a bit. I think using whatever acidulator you left would work. So yeah, I, 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 that's why I didn't add the lemon juice because I figured they apple. Yeah. 
cider, apple cider vinegar was doing that. OK, so now we have our apples. Prepared. That's what it looks like. It already looks good. I already oh, it, it smells <laughs> so, so good. Now the fun part. The fun part is making the caramel. Yes. <laughs> And um, remember that that hot plate gets really hot. It'll take a while to get warm, but when it does get hot, it gets hot. So adjust your settings as needed. Like five, it'll get, it'll take a minute, but it'll get hot. Right. And what I need now is just a, um, we're going to go with a third cup of water, yep. if I could, just, just regular water. I meant to get that before we got started. Thank you. And I'm going to put in a cup of sugar. I love cast iron skillets. I know I put a pot out there for you first and then I really you were like, nope, cast iron. So is it just because of the heat? Like, yeah, there? I I think that also that's a very high, tall, uh -huh. hot. And I, I don't want there to be. Uh, I want to. The, the, have it easier to put the uh, caramel into the pot. OK, and so a lower height of the skill it just makes it a little bit easier gotcha so but thank you I yeah no my, my brain went oh high sides for when it bubbles up but oh uh, well that won't happen okay. there are you know caramel horror stories <laughs> yes there yes there's plenty of horror stories um but with this it won't like uh, great we do have someone asking is it possible to make apple pie with crab apples you know, I haven't tried that, but I know if you go on the internet, you will find, I'm sure you can find, if you can make pies out of quinces. Mm -hmm. Which are rock hard and sweet. They're rock hard and they don't taste so good on their own, but they make a wonderful uh, jelly. Um, I've used quince jelly or jam. I think jelly mm -hmm. uh, for like a English country Christmas cake What's to quince? cover it with yeah. and before I put the marzipan and put in the uh, royal icing over it. That that that's it's getting time to make for real fruit cake, which is like English pudding. Yeah, not that horrible crap. <laughs> Pardon my language, but from. Corsicana, Texas, you know, they're famous for their fruitcakes. And you're like, oh boy, no. And I was just like, no, absolutely. And to put in the pine, candy pineapple and cherries and green stuff, and I was like, no. Maybe it'll be good for a doorstop. Or if you let it kind of fossilize, and it's a great weapon to throw at somebody, but not to eat. But if you do, find a crab apple pie recipe, share it. I think there must be a way people can share recipes. Yeah. And, yeah. you know, post it so other people can find out. Yeah, and we just had someone email me a peach pie recipe. So thank you for sending oh, that. Oh, I love peach pie. And I made a, um, oh, what was it? Um, peach cobbler that the crust had a um, almond flour. Uh-huh. And it's some almond flour in it. Ooh, yum. Uh, and I used uh, bourbon to flavor the peaches. Nice. Folks loved it. With vanilla ice cream, too. So, you know, that's always good. Now, with this, the original recipe said you should have a wet brush on the side to kind of <laughs> bring the sugar back into the center, so to speak. I think if you just kind of keep at it, you know, not splashing it, you won't, there'll still be some solidified sugar on the side. Mm -hmm. You know, that's just, can't avoid it. Yeah. 
Are you aiming? Will this end up being a like liquid pourable caramel rather than a scoopable? Liquid. Yeah. Yeah. So you're not aiming to keep it really perfect right you now. Shamefully, I forgot to bring my Calvados uh, apple brandy, <laughs> and I would put like two tablespoons in it. This pie does the one that I brought. The that Phoebe Magic pie. That's yes, that pie pie. <laughs> that does have Calvados or any kind of apple brandy. So my mea culpa, uh, but I will have butter and uh, whipping cream with this. So it won't be, you know, I don't want it sticky or chewy. Mm -hmm. We don't want that. We want it like to it. where um, you can pour it over the apples once they're in uh, the pie. Okay, now you can see this is coming to a boil and this is what we want. We want it to come to a boil. And the thing is, as this is Boiling. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Uh, Carrie brought me some. Uh, what do you call those? I call them oven mitts, but I know they're not mitts when they're just square. Hot hot pads? I don't know. Hot pads. Yes. The cast iron is going to get hot. Yes, the I'm cast iron will be hot. Yes, yeah, so I guess it's okay we, right now. Yeah. But the thing is, while we're doing it, it we wanted to get an amber color. A little darker if possible. The thing is, is not to let it get like super yeah. dark or burnt. Okay. But you know, I've been doing this a number of times now, so it's like, okay, I'm all right with it. I put in a little more water than it called for. I think they just call for one fourth, but I kind of like to know that. I just kind of like it when it's liquid like this, more liquidy, but it's it's boiling as you can see. Oops. And so I'm keeping my eye on it. It's sort of like if you're making curds, mm -hmm. you cannot walk away when you're making a curd. Because you, you will inevitably scramble burn it, <laughs> scramble it, burn it. No, no, this is this is a commitment. This is a relationship. OK, you have a relationship with your pie and you cannot just walk away and not pay attention to it because guess what? They get testy <laughs> and they can get angry or oh, they can get angry and then you're stuck with a mess. So Should you be constantly like is the idea to keep it constantly moving like you're stirring it? Yeah. Okay. I'm trying to prevent it from caking too much on the side. Yeah. And also just, you know, um, assisting in the dissolving of the sugar into the water and that it's being evenly uh, cooked. We have someone who has named themselves Apple of My Pie, like Apple of My Eye. Very uh, cute, uh, loving all the puns. I do. Oh, I love puns. The worse that they are, the better. They're asking, could you speak more about the role that you see in baking slash sharing food for strengthening community? While you're stirring, if that's not the right, they, they yeah. Handle it well. Oh, yeah. Well, just from experience, what makes <laughs> family gatherings tolerable <laughs> uh, if you're if you're not the most close well you know the well hopefully you have family members that you you know get along with but uh, food really makes everything go down really well okay <laughs> food is a uniter food is a emollient Emulsifier. Emulsifier. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's a glue. And also when people cook and they make something, they're sharing themselves. They're sharing themselves and they're bringing, hopefully, their best foot forward. Like I'm showing you what I'm really good at. I'm sharing something with you that I enjoy, that I love. That's a beautiful thing, you know? They're sharing and also they may be sharing their mothers or their aunties or maybe their. Secretly gay uncle <laughs> special recipe may hopefully now is they're not so secret, but the. Uh, it's really people bringing their best 
and it's a celebration and celebrations just bring people that we need joy in our lives i mean it is a very stressful time fred and i are very well well aware of that but even in the most difficult times people will come together celebrate their friendships their family ships um and say you know even in the midst of difficulties gosh darn it we're going to have a good time and we're going to celebrate what is positive in our lives so even in particularly in the midst of very challenging times we need to celebrate each other we need to celebrate the bounties of nature uh the seasons i mean i love the fall and i also love the winter because in texas we hardly ever had winter and when we did the power grid didn't work <laughs> but i love fall and winter and it's just a wonderful kind of you know snuggly time you know coming together so yeah i hope that answers your question but it's like you know, i hate when people won't share secret family recipes i'm like what's the point like spread the love right make spread sure the, Why spread the making yeah, yeah spread the calories spread <laughs> the sugar spread the uh um the carbs but it's it, it's you know we don't do it all the time but you get to know people people reveal themselves in a happy celebratory um situation and that's beautiful you get to really know people so i see that the sugar has kind of solidified is that normal like is yeah it, it's okay. normal it's I know good can be yeah amazing. this is why i'm having to use a spoon like this but it's it starting yeah it's starting to i was just about to say it starts it started to smell like caramel about 10 yeah, seconds ago it's turning brown slightly that's why you need to have a good strong spoon yeah this the water evaporated more quickly this do you time. want a little bit more water I can uh now i think i just need to lower the heat a you little also bit. don't have the yeah. alcohol in this right mm -hmm. so with the alcohol yeah the oh. alcohol okay now this is where it is yeah, i don't starting. know if you all can see that on the screen but the, the shade has definitely changed in just yeah the past, i'm gonna like, 10 15 seconds flirt with danger and try to get it a little bit darker yeah. and the cast iron will also hold a lot of heat so yeah so once it does over. its bit i will um turn off the heat yeah and you can see that gary has the butter ready next to him so don't start cooking your caramel without having that ready to go yeah, have that'll, it that'll ready work. have it ready because yep. this they can this can turn so quickly but it does smell so amazing quick in here. and i'm thinking okay i'm not going to flirt with catastrophe so i'm putting in my butter isn't butter a water wonderful yeah. thing we have someone called pie tastic who says what kind of pie did the ghost make for halloween blueberry with ice cream yay, yay. oh yay. keep those coming i love it that's hysterical that is so funny how many are on right now? Um, we have 22 people logged on. Yay! And Very if good. Want to share where they're watching from. That's always fun for us. Yeah, to we want to know where where y'all are from. I mean, in the past we've had people from California, Canada, Canada, Texas, Kansas, Missouri, and even from Vermont. Yeah. We've also had at other classes that we've done, we've had some international folks too, which is kind of fun for people. Oh yeah. We've had someone from Peru. We've had someone from Iceland. We've had a couple really? of England. Yeah. yeah, I didn't know that. Yeah. Need for the pie classes? Uh, there's been a couple at yours and then also a couple at, at other ones. Yeah. Oh, that's, um, that's amazing. Gotta figure out the time zones with those. <laughs> oh my gosh. That's amazing. All right, so okay. you can see that the butter has melted in and helped stop the caramel sugar from cooking or slow it down slow it down a little bit california we have yeah kind of along that vein of bringing people together these these live streams have let us 
find a community beyond just sort yeah, of the see, the area. see we have we have created community yeah we have arlington virginia and chicago hey chicago hey arlington Virginia. Okay, I'm going to take this off. Portland, Oregon. So we have some. Yay, Portland. That's terrific. Charlotte, North Carolina. How many repeaters do we have? I say at least one because they were like, I'm happy to be tuning into another one of your great presentations. So oh, thank you. Yeah, I would appreciate feedback. Don't tell me I need plastic surgery because my <laughs> salary just doesn't cover that. Uh, but let me know how you like it. Let me know uh, what works. Uh, what about the presentation? I could fine tune. There's always a place for fine tuning. Now this is a little lumpy, but that's okay. It's going to melt into a pie. Right? It's going to melt into the pie. You're not going to use. You're not going to make candy with this. This is a little more sugary lumpy. But that's OK. We have uh, Toronto, Ontario, Canada. Another Toronto. Hey, Toronto. A couple of people saying that this is their second one and a couple of people saying that this is their first one. Cool. Well, thank you for coming. All right, so now next steps. Yes. And again, I would encourage you to get Calvados or some other Apple brandy because it really does kick it up. Yeah, if you're local up here, Shelburne Orchards does their own. Oh, really? Brandy. Oh, yeah, that own. would be fabulous. Now, since I have already put in a lot of spices, in the um, filling. in the filling, I'm just going to follow their recommendations. Oh, do I uh, need to get you some more cinnamon, or are you just going to do some? No, more? I'm. Uh, okay. uh, I'll I'll skip that. Okay. Someone says, if it's not burnt, it's all good. Caramel for the win. That's what I <laughs> think about. Positive thinking. Yeah, I like it. that. Um. And allspice, you know, that kind of covers it. Yeah. Okay. Nutmeg is just so fall to me. Like, it just screams fall. Oh, I just love nutmeg. And then my um, macadamia date pie, mm -hmm. it does have, mm -hmm. it's a bit nutmeg forward. We so, were talking earlier, Gary and I, about how. Um, Nutmeg is actually hallucinogenic in very high quantities, but I think you have to eat like a whole nutmeg thing to. <laughs> so I not would not. Nutmeg, I would not advise it. I mean, I love nutmeg, and it's getting that time of year. You know, I mean, we we our store has eggnog. It came in this week, beginning of this week, and it's like, oh wow, I can make myself sick. On eggnog, <laughs> shamefully, shamefully to say. All right, we have someone who has named themselves Happy Pie to be here, like happy to be here, <laughs> right here in downtown Burlington. Oh, very close keep, to keep yeah. that up! I love it. I love it, and, and it's, it's it's wonderful to feel like you know people are watching this and they're participating because you know this is I so to speak this is my quote. My, I was trying to think of another one to say. I, I'm just so bad at coming up with puns. On I'm pieing for you. Hey, maybe like in the fridge to like slowly soften. It'd be great. It smells so good in here. I wish we had a way to pipe smells through your laptops. Okay, now. Pie dough time. It's time to roll out the pie dough. Should turn this over. 
that heat was on the skill. It was pretty. Uh, someone asked, was that on the same heat the whole time? And no, I think you turned it pretty far down, right? Yeah, it's off right now. It is off. But like you reduce the heat. Part oh, yeah, the once yeah, yeah, with a cast iron skillet, it's like I take it off the heat. Mm -hmm. It just holds so much. Totally. As soon as the, the amber, a strong amber color comes in because the cast iron will keep cooking because it's hot. Uh, but, you know, I add the butter and then I add the uh, cream, which kind of slows down the cooking process. OK, we're going to roll out our dough. And you'll notice um, the recipe for the pie dough that we included specifies that it makes two crusts for either two single crust pies or one double crust pie. For this recipe, you'll want to keep that whole recipe together because you'll see with the finished pie, it's basically making a double crust pie without actually rolling out a separate crust. You're going right. to fold up the edges. So this yeah. is that complete recipe in one ball rather than dividing it into, right. into two. Just wanted to specify that if you're going to make Exactly. It. Thank you. Uh, this kind of looks like a gelette in a way, but it's the hole is very small, so it's not a gelette. 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 Gelette's the razor. <laughs> <laughs> See? You know, you know what you meant, though. This is comedy. Yeah, oh, I'm from Texas. We don't know. We don't know anything down there. Except it is a very beautiful pot huh. looking at the finished one. A gelette. I'll be very excited to see the finished one. Yeah. So yes, this is basically all of that recipe for the double crust pie in yep. one. And I want the overhang not to be thick. I like the, you know, folding it over. It has that rustic look to it. And I have to thank Martha Stewart for showing me in one of her cookbooks a way of doing pie making like that. And I just thought, wow, that looks gorgeous. It's rustic. And it's easier <laughs> than rolling out yeah, two. Yeah, rolling out two, exactly. Rolling out two. But I've been doing those more recently, and it's it's fine. It's fine. It's a good thing we have a a big board, otherwise we'd have to be rolling. Oh it yes. Right on the table. I know. And I where I I have to find one this big. I think so. This was here when I started working here, but it might have been from either Kiss the Cook or the restaurant supply store. It's probably the restaurant supply yeah. store. Where is that? I don't know. I just remember seeing that we bought some stuff for the kitchen from it. So give me a minute to Google when I can find out. Or unless anybody in the area wants to uh, to chime in before I can get to the Googling. Yeah, we have a, some cutting boards, but they're just a little bit small. I mean, they're not as large as this, and I like this. Also, I love this kind of rolling pin. I believe this is a French ro style rolling pin. All right, so there's uh, Singer Kittridge in Williston, and there is Green Mountain Restaurant Equipment in Milton, and Skeeger Restaurant Supply in Rutland. So we have all sorts of places. Wow, good. Look at that. Very good. Okay, that's probably more than enough. And I brush off the excess flour. It is kind of messy, I have to admit. And I'm a clean freak, meat freak. Fred will attest to that. Right, Fred? Both are. Yeah, Fred is too. We we both have developed that. Which is good because, you know, people can come over and we don't have to worry that we have a dead horse lying around somewhere. And people can come in. <laughs> I feel like that's an inside joke. <laughs> I think about that with um with the construction going on and just oh god yes yeah for those who don't know uh here in Burlington uh, a roadway 
that had been put on hold for how long? Uh, like close to a decade, I think, or yeah, over a decade. Probably, yeah, it has been reactivated. And we were just, it kind of felt like we were out in the boonies here, our store, uh, with woods, and we're near Lake Champlain. It was very wooded. Um, well, they started constructing and this past couple of weeks have even been blasting. Yeah, we've had uh, twice had daily uh, fun explosion shows. We all stop and watch what's happening. <laughs> yeah, it's like, oh, one time I you know, watched and I actually saw the flash. Nice. And it was loud and it was very big. I've only ever seen, I've only been here for two and they were both very small, like boom. Okay. Oh, that was well, I've seen those, but we, there was a really big one. Nice. But they should be done, I hear. I hear that. Yes, I think they're supposed to, was that today? I think so. Oh, okay. So here. Uh, so, yeah, so we used the double crust recipe, rolled it out really big, and you'll see that we're leaving a ton of overhang on purpose. Somebody asked that in the chat. Yeah, it's it's for a reason. Yeah, we have someone uh, who named themselves Pi Love This, like I love this. Uh, what are some unusual spices or herbs that you've added to fruit pies that have worked out well? And the last class that graded with us was blueberry lavender, and that was delicious. Oh, yeah, um, lavender. Lavender's great. It's wonderful. Uh, it's just a... And I got that idea uh, when we were down in uh, Dallas, and Fred and I are from Dallas, Texas. I'm originally from Houston, hell on the bio, as it's affectionately called. Uh, and he at that time was working at a, a special store of HEB, which is a Texas, um, grocery store line, uh, Central Market, which is like, you know, gourmet heaven's paradise. It was just had everything and really good food there, too. It's just amazing. The, the produce section along, alone would just knock you over. Mm -hmm. But uh, I went through their uh, condiments uh, salad dressing section and I saw a vinaigrette lavender blueberry and I thought wow I mean I love blueberries okay anything blueberries I love and they had that and I thought well I've tasted lavender ice cream I've tasted lavender icing hmm and I made lavender blueberry pie and it even won a pie competition award in a, uh, Dallas for one of the, I think it was uh, in East Dallas. And uh, it's been a popular one. Mm -hmm. But you know, um, I've seen pies recipes with thyme, with rosemary. Those would be interesting. And I imagine really good with um, apples. And I've had a, uh, what was it? What did I do? I'm trying to remember. I love cardamom. Mm -hmm. That's one of and, my favorites. And I found, I made a, a, a pear tart. I love pears. And I found a recipe for pear tart tatin. Is that how you say it? Oh, tart tatin. Tart yeah. tatin. Thank you. Like apple tart tatin is. Yeah, this was pear nice. tart tartan uh, for pears. And you. Uh, sprinkled it with crushed uh, cardamom seeds. Nice. Without the pod, mm -hmm. but the, the seeds and amazing. It was so s sophisticated. Yeah. I mean, it, it was just unique and it was just really good. Uh, well, someone says, make sure to use culinary lavender so things don't taste like soap. Yes, there are different kinds well, of lavender. Well, yeah, sure uh, you're I would not advise using lavender essential oil unless you can't find dried culinary lavender and lavender. Yeah. And, you know, just to dried flowers and I just sprinkle to taste. Yeah. Yeah, I think you it's know. one of those flavors that definitely can taste soapy if you go too far. Right. Bad yeah. products. So you just have to sometimes you have to experiment a little bit. Yeah. But they, uh, I want it to where I can taste it, but I don't want people to feel like they're eating potpourri. Uh, 
<laughs> which is <laughs> saying, well, smells good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I follow um, Ball Canning, like the canning jar company on Instagram, and they just posted a recipe for a red wine rosemary fake jam. Oh. That I think sounds amazing to turn into a tart base. Like, make what is it? Red wine, ras uh, ro red wine, rosemary, and figs. So black oh. and figs with rosemary. Oh. Yeah. So you know, I love that. too bad the fig season is over unless I can use dried. And I think I, I will try it. Yeah, I, I love black figs. Yeah. Someone says, what do you think of the Vermont tradition of eating apple pie with cheddar cheese on the side? I've never done it. I know. <laughs> I know. But I did make a pecan pie with maple syrup. There you go. And, You're a Vermonter. So. And, and the uh, coffee. All right, so I see you're folding up all of the edges and really squishing them in there. Yep. I've seen a recipe once where there's actually shredded cheddar cheese in the crust of the Yeah, apple I pie. have seen that too. And that sounds uh, good. I should break down and do, you know, the trouble is there's just too many yeah. <laughs> fabulous a, uh, pie recipes. I found out, oh, I came up, well, I'm sure it's out there somewhere. I. The summer here we had, and we still do have lots of raspberries, and I love raspberries, and I love raspberry rhubarb pie, mm -hmm. which is a perfect combination because rhubarb has that tartness, but also has uh, fiber. <laughs> I mean, it has body, and mm -hmm. you know, raspberries will dissolve. But uh, I combined raspberries with the Italian prune plums, oh. huh. with a little bit of nutmeg, yum, and sugar. And uh, it was just amazing. So what I do is I keep my eye open for pie cookbooks, dessert cookbooks, but particularly pies and tarts. And just you, you'd be amazed what's out there. Mm -hmm. And the. Uh, and also magazines, cooking magazines. Uh, I still have gourmet magazines from the 80s. Nice. That great recipes in. Anyway, so this is what it looks like. Can you hold? Yeah, I was saying, yeah. can you hold it up? This is what so it, it really looks is like. that tall. Like if you hold it up kind of sideways to the camera, you can see just how much it rises up above the edge of the right. pie plate. So some people may not like, you know, a heavy crust like that, but I love crust. <laughs> I love crust. Now this is a whole egg beaten with a little bit of water. And this will give a nice glow once it's baked to your crust. It's not necessary per se, but you know, you've gone this far. Mm -hmm. Jack it up a, in a good way a little bit more, make it look really special. Can you do a like a milk or a cream wash? Yeah. If you're avoiding egg? Yeah, okay. you can do that. I've done it in different ways. Mm -hmm. This is what this recipe called for. I think one time I did it with a mixture of egg and cream. Oh. Uh, so, you know, whatever works. And it kind of makes me feel like an artist. And if you do this, you are an artist. OK, you are an art. Cooking oh, is. Somebody commented, where does the caramel come in? Did we forget to pour the caramel in before we folded? Oh my God! Oh, I forgot the caramel. Yes. In the caramel. <laughs> thank you for the uh, thank you. <laughs> See, you were the, the we were talking so much about Texas and sharing, and we forgot the caramel, but we saved it before it went in the oven. Thank, thank, thank you. you. Oh all my God! See, paying attention. See, things like this can happen. Because that would have been a lot harder to try to fit through the little hole at the top. Well, we would just have to eat. The, the caramel. caramel. Yeah, oh no, that would be really. We would just have to eat the caramel. I can't believe I did that. Thank you for saving my ass. I appreciate it. <laughs> it's those puns. Your puns were so punny that yeah, I had. Puns. I got distracted. Someone commented the end when you're brushing on the egg white or egg washes, tarting up the tart. <laughs> yes, it is. Painting it, it up. It, it's it's sinful. Let's just let's. Let's admit it. It's a sinful dessert. But you know, 
You got to sin once in a while. Well, and it's like you said at your last class. It's not like you're making a pie and eating it every single night. This is a special This is a occasion. special occasion. That's what pies are for. So in the old days, you know, farmers would have pie like every morning. Yeah, because they got to calorie up for Yeah, hard work I mean, there. there was a reason for it. But none of us, very few of us are working in the back 40. <laughs> oh, that parallel is so, so. Thank you for yeah. the person who said, what, what happened? A couple to the people car? caught us on that. Good job. I mean, Thank it wouldn't you. have gone to waste. We would have poured it over ice cream. That's fine. <laughs> that, yeah, believe me, we would not have wasted it. But it has to be in this pie. Can people adjust the salt level to taste if they yes. like a saltier? Yes. Okay. I added just a little more salt. Just a little. Because sometimes some of the salted caramel is, it, you can really taste it. Yeah. And some people may want to put like salt flakes on top mm -hmm. just to give it that little extra salt, but not too much. Yeah. You know, you're not going to salt it like a truck stop diner would. It smells so good in here. Because the, the hot caramel has sort of warmed up all the spices, too. So you're getting hints of the all the spices. Oh, yeah. It's great. There, there we, go. we go. It's like it never even happened. It didn't happen. It didn't happen. I don't know what it you're did, talking it, about. It didn't. Yeah, it didn't happen. No, let tell them, tell them. I'll cut that part of the video out. I'll just cut, <laughs> cut right to adding the No, I, it, it reminds, excuse me, it reminds me of the Galloping Gourmet back in the 70s. The guy from Britain, cute guy, and he would do these gourmet meals and go super fast. And, and he was really good, but he sometimes would have little accidents. Like one time he forgot, he was going so fast, he forgot to put the lid on top of the uh, blender. Uh -oh. And he was blending, yes, blending some, crushing some cookies and it just went <laughs> But I mean, the audience loved it. <laughs> okay, there we are. This will go into the oven. If I had a little more, sh well, I can I'm sorry, I would do that, this. that stuff's nice big crystals it'll be nice and crunchy yeah i've only ever done that once and i i caught myself right after i hit the button so i didn't make a mess but i did try to blend without the lid on once so that's what it's gonna look like it's gonna go in the oven i'll just put that this over here yep and we'll just do some tv magic and pretend we've already baked one and Time here we go. Instantly. This is what I made early, and it's still warm. Oh, this is what it will look like. Salted Gorgeous. caramel apple pie, and I promise you the white stuff is not salt, it's <laughs> sugar. So uh, we need to try this out. Yeah, there's plates in the cabinet or the closet right behind you there. And do you want a sharp knife or like a butter knife? Uh, mm, let's do a, do you, how thick are the butter knives? How big are they? No, let's go with that. That's better. I wish y'all were here. Oh my yeah, goodness. This is the part that we wish we could share pie with you and all. it's very juicy and so it's important to let this one cool for a while right i saw on your right own. any fruit pie you really should let it cool for four hours it this is not quite four hours with this one but we can't just sit here and not eat this pie. no that <laughs> would be a sin there's the and metal spatula if that would help yeah I one. see but yeah as you can all see we're gonna end a little bit before seven today so now as we're serving and showing you the finished product would be the perfect time to input any last minute questions that you have or comments for Gary or for me. 
Um, you also have my email. I was you know, the one emailing you the link and everything like that. So if there are questions that come up later or if you want to share pie pictures or anything with me, I can pass them on to Gary as well. Um, someone commenting they're pining for a slice. They wish they were here too. <laughs> Uh, Very good. Uh, yeah. Oh, and we have vanilla yep, ice cream. Yes, be an ice cream, ice cream guy. It's great to have uh, multiple hands in the kitchen. I love it. I can just sit here and chat. Um, thank you all so much for tuning in. And uh, also, if, even if you don't, before they go, they have to see your expression on your face. Well, even. no. I remember I always wait to eat until after because. Uh, no one okay. Wants to well, hear me then you have to the wait mic. until I. Show my expression. Yeah, it looks but, fantastic, but no one wants to hear me chewing into a microphone, so I wait till after we we say goodbye. <laughs> oh. That's such an uncomfortable sound to be forced <laughs> to listen. To. Particularly if you're not enjoying it. Yeah, watching somebody else enjoy pie. Oh. But yeah, thank you all so much. I'll be sending out a survey link tomorrow. Would love to know your thoughts on the class, ideas for other classes in the future that you'd like to see from us. Um, and like I said, we are working on getting sort of our back stock of class recordings up. I'm sorry that they are taking as long as they do, but they take like six hours each. Um, so we oh, would love wow, to have you long. tune into those and, and watch those on your own time when you want. Uh, Wendy's saying, are you having any holiday baking classes? Yes, we actually have one, not with Gary, but later this month, at the end of the month, we're doing a holiday baking for gift giving. So like things that are good to wrap and give as gifts. I think that is the 30th um, it's up on our calendar and then we have a book de noel or a noel christmas log cake in december that isn't up yet december classes will be published around the 10th um, and then i'll connect with gary and see if he wants to teach one more holiday class for us before the end oh of the yeah year. um so keep an eye on our class calendar and we will get some more baking classes on the calendar for you all also Share what you make for the holidays. Yeah. You would like to see, you know, share. I mean, we have a community here. And, you know, in the South, I'm sure it's the same here. You know, when people get together, they share, you know, their special, well, some of them will share their special recipe or they want to show off their special recipes. And this is the time for you to show off what you will do for the holidays yeah. and i'm sure there's some great recipes out there i haven't seen any of us have seen so bring your best uh not just at your family or friends gathering but here and let's see if we can really develop a community of pie makers <laughs> Somebody asking a last minute question. Does the bottom crust get soggy with that much liquid? Um, yeah, I never, mine has never been soggy. Mine has Maybe if it sits for more than like a day, if you have less. Well, after a while, yeah, yeah but uh, no. I, I follow the instructions about where to place the pine. It was in the lower third of the oven. Mm -hmm. um, so that kept it from, I mean, it baked appropriately. Um, the longer, I mean, I think, you know, when they say don't cut into a fruit pie for about four hours, you just allow time for it to kind of congeal. Exactly. This is still warm. Yeah, this has not had the full Yeah, this is so. warm. It's gonna be delicious though. Yeah, but it's, but if the juice is good, <laughs> so that, President Pieden commenting, Gary for next pies a dent or president. <laughs> <laughs> and then good pie and to all a good night. So yes, I think we will wrap up on that note. Thank you all so much for tuning in. Thank you to Gary. Thank you to Fred. Um, and I'm happy to hear maybe I can do one more for yeah, the holidays. We'll I would more. love it. Yeah. All right, everybody. I'm going to go ahead and end the live event. Any questions?